find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have you. your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. But I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail for the set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Beat up for the taste of the poor. Six, six, six. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show back again. I'm Sorgatron. Mike Sorg here, a little video editor here in Pittsburgh, doing some wrestling things with the IWC, RWA, and a few other projects here and there. Something called Finding Zach Gowan. We found him. That's good. Uh, also with me, as usual, uh, from straight up in Texas, the uh, commentator for Inspire Pro Wrestling. Amen. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Uh, I hope for, hope that one day with a little bit more experience and, and more time in the biz, uh, as they say, I'll be able to find a professional wrestler, uh, which is a, a rare thing you were able to do, Sorg. You, I think it's an achievement in, in wrestling world. Yes, yes, the the wrestler finding. It's like Pokemon. You have to catch it's, them it's all. It's just like Pokemon. Just like Pokemon. I like Pokemon. Except with more super kicks. But again, hey, yes, exactly. Um, I don't think <laughs> he... I don't I'm think sorry. Zach Gowan super kicks, though. Um, I don't know. I, I don't doubt it. I, you know, hey... He's conquered all the other things. Why not a super kick? Um, anyways, <laughs> again, thank you. Intro by Basic Sickness. Great music there. Check out his stuff. Some free downloads over at basicsickness.com. Oh, I did see. I think he put out a music video in the last week. I've uh, been meaning to check that out. Some great, some fun stuff there. So also check out his YouTube channel. And uh, also, uh, you can find more about this show over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can find this Indie Mayhem Show on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Spreaker, the iHeartRadio app. So please uh, 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 like us on there, favorite us, subscribe to us, leave comments, share it with your friends if you dig this kind of stuff. Um, and... Uh, and also, uh, you can drop us a line. Uh, we're at Good Times at Wrestling Mayhem Show dot com, or uh, give us a call on the hotline. Leave a message at four one two two zero six WMS zero. Talk some indie wrestling with us, or other wrestling for the other show. That's fine too. And uh, also, we're on Twitter at Mayhem Show if you want to talk with us. Uh, I'm also at Sorgatron at Amen Two Please for him. Um, and we're also on Facebook, Google Plus under the Wrestling Mayhem Show, and the best place is the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group where there's a lot of great great conversation there and of course you can join us typically about 11 p.m uh eastern time 10 p.m central time for amen uh over at live.sorgatronmedia.com every tuesday of course this year we are doing this interview a little early where we usually start the wrestling mayhem show proper at uh 9 p.m so just so if, you, if it's much lighter in my room and then you immediately come in it's a bit darker that's yes. the reason why yes as we as we because cut, time zones. as we transfer in time uh across this 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 time spanning episode here uh so our guest this week we're completing our collection speaking of cash them law i think we were completing our collection of justin's on this one uh as justin Plummer joins us jeez what is your title with iwc what, what do i call you you're just uh the superhero of <laughs> iwc of I course do. you know it, but whatever i mean i just say i'm just some guy i do what i need to do if Broadcast you, correspondent. What did they? Nice. Uh, what did Bobby Heenan used to go by? I prefer that. Uh, broadcast journalist, I think, was what he what he called himself. Broadcast journalist. Yeah, I don't want to step on Dabrowski's toes, but uh, that's what I am. Host, uh, producer, everything. I thought I'd get a bigger intro. I wanted like a Jericho style. Justin Plummer returns to the Mayhem show. At least a countdown of some sort. Not, not, no, not, 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 not with this. Just like, about, oh, just like most, just like most of these, we're struggling. Me. We're struggling indie. We're working on getting pyro. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We're gonna start a Patreon for this, and and hopefully with the. You could have warned me. I would have just been like, dun, 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 <laughs> or something. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, I'm sorry. Amazing. We can't have the awesome uh, 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 intro like you do to the great aftershock uh, show oh, well. over on over on the YouTube's. Uh, so, uh, but no, this the. This is, it's been great because one, you take, uh, you're the guy that's taken a lot of the slack off of me having to do a lot of stuff for IWC so I can concentrate on the DVDs and getting those out there. Uh, yeah, sure. But you're the ones going out, uh, apparently climbing trees with Chuck Roberts, God knows where, 
in western <laughs> P, in southwestern PA. I I don't even. I, uh, was, no, 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 we were in the Amazon. You're in the question. Amazon. Okay, and uh, and yeah. apparently having exclusive interviews in secret locations with the STDs, which kind of scare me. Um, but but let, let's take it back before, well, before we get into all that technical stuff. Um, so Justin Plummer, I want to know about Justin Plummer, the guy, the dude. Okay. No, you don't. Why? No, you don't. <laughs> Why pro wrestling? What 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 got you into pro wrestling in the first place? What's your earliest uh, kind of memory? Uh, earliest memory, uh, probably nineteen. Uh, actually, let's go even before I've actually watched pro wrestling. I I went to a. a this lady's house, she did kind of like an in-home daycare center that me and my sister went to with a bunch of other kids for, God, the first probably six years of our lives. And she had these little, hold on, there we go, little thumb wrestling toys. They were like these little rubber thumb wrestlers. I think actually one of them was the Iron Sheet. And I just loved playing with these little wrestling guys and just making them beat the hell out of, beat, beat the H out of each other. And, uh, and, uh. So I don't know. One day, I, I think one of my parents said, "Hey, Justin, the, the, the toys that you play with, look, they're on TV." And and the match had it was right around the 1990 Survivor Series time is when I watched it. So it, it was right before the Survivor Series, and it was some sort of hype match, and then some combination because Survivor Series in, in 1990, the big match, it was with the world champion, and but it was the opening match, it was the Ultimate Warrior, Texas Tornado, and the Legion of Doom. Versus Mr. Perfect and three oh, members of the demolition. So I don't remember which combination of those guys I saw, but it was it must have been like Saturday Morning Superstars or something, and they were trying to hype that match. So it was probably the demolition versus Texas Tornado, and I don't know, I don't know. But uh, is, are these the guys it. you're talking about? That is exactly it. Oh my god! It's so amazing. Hulk Hogan, Nikolai Volkov. It's okay. it's, it's the it first. Was probably Hogan and Iron Sheik. Uh, were the ones because I don't I remember the one guy had like spikes on his feet. These are so the to, the yeah. very first I think wrestling action figurey things that I ever owned. That is insane because I haven't seen those since I was six years old. Like that's and the, the paint's still on them too. Yeah, well, mostly <laughs> uh, the USSR is coming off a little bit. You're, you're losing a little bit of uh, Hogan's bandana there, but uh, yeah. Who needs it? No, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. So I was playing with those things and thought those. Those were so cool that, uh, you know, I don't know. And I somehow got into wrestling. And then I actually, before I got into indie wrestling, I didn't really ever, I, I think I went to two indie shows in my entire life before I actually got involved. But one of them, uh, Acts of the Demolition was there. So, you know, I had to tell him the story, like, which I'm sure it made him feel great. Like, hey, dude, you know, when I was, you know, well, at the time I wasn't that old. I was probably in, you know, my early 20s, but. You know, hey, I, I watched you when I was six years old. You're the reason I got into wrestling. He's probably like, thanks, guy. That's about when I was ready to retire. But, hey, yeah, that was it. That's what got me in. And then at the uh, Saturday night's main event before the 1990 Survivor Series, I have it on VHS. I still have it on VHS with a sticker that calls it Wrestler Mania. So that's what my mom thought it was. And uh, I could probably close my eyes and watch that entire Saturday night main event. I've watched it so many times I got it memorized. So uh, that's what got me hooked. The Ultimate Warrior, Mr. Perfect, Legion of Doom, Demolition, those guys. Awesome, awesome. Well, what got you into the indie wrestling? How did you discover it around here? Um, it's It seemed like it started to become more socially acceptable to be gay. And so I figured this is the place to come. And no, <laughs> <didn't>. <laughs> They're like, really? Really? No, I... Uh, I thought we were going to get a bombshell. Okay. I was just going to stop and see how long you were going to sit there in shock that I I'm like, that. what? He just had a kid. Like, okay. <laughs> Did, I? Did he? It's all It's all a work. It's no, uh, work. indie wrestling. It's actually crazy how I got it because let me move back from the camera so I'm not like eating you. Uh, I, I, you know, I have. I went to went to college, got my degree, got a job. When I was working, I, I went and got my MBA uh, while I was working, which was really tough. But I would suggest that uh, you do it if you can. But it's it's very, it, it's just very, it just kills your soul, to put it lightly, <laughs> to just be constantly business, business, business. And I've always been a huge wrestling fan. And um, I have... At the time, I thought I had a good voice for some reason. So, and I had done a couple of other things for like weddings and that. Just, just the 
nothing too much, just like, you know, two or three things. And so uh, I, people knew I wanted to be a ring announcer. That's what I wanted to be. <laughs> like I wanted to do what Pedro does now. And um, my sister knew the owners of Court Time. She's best friends with the daughter of the people that own Court Time Sports Center, which is where I had to see runs. And she said, hey, I heard uh, this wrestling company runs out of Court Time. Their, their uh, ring announcer just quit. Now, meanwhile, this is like a year, two years late that she told me this because it's Chuck Roberts who became the owner. Mm. And so I heard they need a ring announcer. You should give them a call. So uh, the Sanderson's who in court time got me Chuck's number, and I called him. I texted him. I left him voicemails. And this probably went on for, God, two, two or three weeks that I just, you know, I'd get a hold of him, but he'd be on a business trip or whatever. But uh, eventually he made time for me. And we talked for probably 20 minutes, and he said, send me your Facebook page. i got to see what you look like. And I'm like, okay. But at this time, <laughs> my Facebook profile picture was what I used for our, uh, our family's Christmas card that year, which was a Photoshopped uh, Santa's sleigh with me in a zebra print women's one-piece bathing suit, an elf hat, and a giant candy cane, my wife as Santa Claus, and my cat as Rudolph. So I'm like, well, there goes any chance I ever had at this place. <laughs> And uh, I got a call back probably like an hour later, and he said, well, okay, you know, you, you look like you're in decent shape, blah, 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 blah. Do you have any experience in wrestling? I said, no. Have you ever been to one of our shows? I haven't. Have you ever bought any of our DVDs? And I'm like, damn it, should I lie? No, I, I don't. I've never done any of that. And he's like, okay, good. I just want to make sure you're not some, like, super fan or whatever, you know. And I'm like, actually, I, so I'm glad I was honest. And uh, he said, I'll call you if we ever need anything for you, I think. I have a different idea for you, but we'll see. And then uh, that month, Pedro got sick and couldn't ring announce out in Clearfield. So I got a, a chance to go out and uh, be a ring announcer in Clearfield. I think it was Combat in Clearfield, the original one. And that's why I love that place every time I go back there because it just brings back all that emotion because I was terrified. You know, you don't know anybody. You just walk into this locker room in a suit and everyone just staring at you. But uh, I went out there. Things went well. And then uh, – he got back in touch and slowly said, hey, we're thinking about going back on TV, but it might be more beneficial to do some sort of web series. We're still kind of tossing around the idea, but we think we want you to be the face of that, and we just want to give you the ball and let you run with it. And that's what he did. So from the very beginning, he trusted me and said, just, you know, here's the idea I want. Take it and run with it. And as the years went by, I got more and more freedom to now where it's the point where I can just really do whatever – whatever I want within, you know, the framework of, of what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And here I am today. What was that? Only 20 minute story there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, and it's one of those things like, it's so weird. Like people like kind of just show up, you know, at these shows. Um, like I had no idea where you came from. I honestly had no idea. You're just like this guy that started showing up and apparently was doing that's the video. Because show. I, came from, I literally came from nowhere. I had nothing. There was no, uh, no credentials, you know. I wasn't yeah. working for a smaller promotion, and and they said, "Hey, we could use this guy." I wasn't doing anything on TV at the time, and and I just was persistent, and I just kept calling, and and uh, eventually I got a shot, and that's all you can do. You you know, I wasn't I wasn't persistent to the point that I was irritating. I was just mm -hmm. I would follow up and follow up because I knew just give me a shot, you know, give me a shot, meet me, get to know me, see what I can do. And if you don't like me, that's it. And that's all I could ask for is just a chance. And uh, I don't know why he would just take some random guy who randomly called him out of nowhere and give him a shot. But I'm glad he did. And, it's, and I think he's glad he did because it's worked out ever since. Because, uh, you know, he doesn't have to worry about any of the, the backstage promo interview Mm -hmm. hype video any of that stuff i kind of just taken the ball and ran with it on that yeah and you and you've definitely a great great hand with helping with some of the video stuff that i it's just beyond my scope of what i can do especially on a show day like that because i you know we have you know our production concerns that we're dealing with and and, and then we say we want to do this extra promo and it's like plumber you got <laughs> your camera buddy uh I, i'm doing <laughs> Eh, you know, um, and and I usually can't spare my guys too too much because you know, you know, especially those court time shows, all the setup that goes into those because it's it's, it's a, a great what we do there, but it's it's a lot of stuff on the back end uh, that we're you know taping together practically. Uh, so aftershock is the big thing is really, and I I've been really excited to see 
uh, it's been getting a lot of traction out there because um, that's always my big thing with with indies like this is do you get to see what it's about you know sometimes you'll have a crappy one camera video on YouTube it's like well at least you see the matches versus you know having that upfront presentation and I love that we have this uh, uh, what you do feels like the old like 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 WWF event center of what's going on and it's a nice you know pickup you know it's a nice place for people to jump in uh to the product and, and what's going on there yeah definitely and it's it's uh it's evolved over the years too i remember when i first was asked to do it i didn't even own a video camera mm -hmm. and i'm thinking to myself what, what am i supposed to do you know and i wasn't i wasn't you're, you're around wrestling your whole life so you know you you know what's needed for you know an effective promo and this and that, but until you're really around it, and I, and I still I know I have a ton to learn because I've only been doing this for four years, but but you know to pick I, I go out and I buy a cheap handheld camera and I'm like okay this is it and I remember for the first episode I I just stood in my basement and and I I may have gotten the steel cage doors from our uh, you know that we use for our cage matches and hung an IWC sign on them I don't even know if I did that. And I just stood in front of it, and, and God, it's so bad. I almost want to take them down from YouTube because <laughs> it's so, you know. Hello, everybody. I am Justin Plummer, and this is IWC Aftershock. And it's just like, ah, uh, it's so painful to watch. But uh, I, didn't, I didn't have any idea what I was doing. I just kind of, you know, I, I was just told, here's what we want. Now go figure out a way to, to get that on, on screen. And it wasn't bad for what it was. And actually, there's one of the earlier ones. That's when I moved up to the office where we had better lighting. <laughs> and I learned how to play. Oh, God, this is so funny to watch. I'm sorry. And I learned how to put graphics on the screen next to me. So I was so excited for, for putting that graphic up. Oh, wow. This is, uh, this is actually the first show we did as Sorgatron Media. Oh, really? That you're, ca that you're recapping in this video. Yeah, and there's your, your WWE NXT superstar in there. That's right, yeah. Logan Shulo, uh, Samuel Elias, I believe is going by, and Bobby Shields uh, of Ring of Honor jobbage. Uh, yeah. <laughs> actually, and he's... A Ryback, in a Ryback jobbage, right? Didn't yeah, he, uh... yeah, he did do a Ryback jobbage. Huh? There you go. So you got two WWE superstars in there right now. That's Look, right. That was two years ago on Aftershock. We, we, we get them way before they peak. January, so, uh... <laughs> January 2012. But it's it's just been uh, it's just been so much fun just trying to I've taught myself everything because I really you know from starting off with whatever the free stopper was that came with my Dell laptop computer at the time and this you know two hundred dollar handheld camera to now you know then when I moved into better lighting and better editing software and then I got started getting into keying and green screening and then uh, you know finally. Finally, even though it's, it's huge and it's attached to my chest, uh, we have a microphone now to get rid of the echo in this room. This room's actually where I film now, in my house. And uh, and I hate to break the hearts of anybody who thought I was really overlooking this. Was there anybody who thought I actually overlooked the city and had a giant purple couch? Probably not. <laughs> I loved, I was a big fan of the purple couch. Oh, God, so much imaginary sex was had on that purple couch. <laughs> Imaginary hot women. It was just crazy. Hold on. I, we, I did find. Though. Here's episode <laughs> one. Where apparently you are uh, filming in a dungeon. <laughs> it's. I forget what I. But it's hardcore. It's cinder block and steel. That's what we did. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so Man. hard for me. Even to this day. Because I'm such an. In real life. I'm just such an animated person. And I'm just. I'm like a cartoon character brought to life. And, and people, I've said that about myself, and there's people out there now, because I do other, I used to do other stuff besides wrestling that got a lot of uh, exposure online. And there's people out, now, now that, out there now that will, like, bash me, like, he's such a goofy cartoon character looking. And I'm like, I take pride in that. I love, I love cartoons. I love the fact that I'm not just, like, this cardboard cut out of a human being. Mm -hmm. But even now that I'm more comfortable within, you know, IWC and indie wrestling and and uh, I kind of have more freedom to do what I want. I kind of have more, you know, people are ex more accepting of, of my, my creativity. I still have to be that, 
that straight in a non-sexual way that's straight you know direct i'm an inter i, I enter i do interviews for a living and i and i host the show so i i can't be 100 percent me which is just like mm. ah, i just want to be crazy all the time and, and get out especially because i'm locked in an office for nine to ten hours a day <laughs> so it is tough because it is like you're playing you know you i'm not a i'm not a wrestler i'm not going out there and doing my thing but i'm i am a character in that i gotta tone it all down and try to box it all in, but still be enthusiastic, just not the goofy enthusiastic, the more professional enthusiastic. And try not to use my hands to talk as much as I do, so I'm about to hurt somebody. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, one question, we, uh, you know, uh, you've done a lot of, any, and I don't think you haven't done anything, you've been exclusively working with IWC, you haven't done anything with anybody else, right? I, um, Shane Taylor, which, uh, I think everybody knows, mm -hmm. was a fraternity brother of mine. So I knew him before he was a wrestler. He knew me before I did any of this. And I think he might have helped to, like, verify that I was a good dude with Chuck when it all started. But at the very beginning, like, four years ago, I did some... Oh, what's that guy's name? Uh, Bill Bill Collier, I think. Did yeah. A, uh, mm. He, they tried starting a promotion out in Hastings, PA, and I forget what it, it was called, Next Gen Pro Wrestling or something like that. And I got to, you know, and Shane kind of told them, hey, bring this guy out, blah, 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 blah. And uh, he's a really good dude. And I actually got to be a heel manager for Shane, which oh, was wow. the most fun I've ever had in wrestling. It was Because I feel like I'm just... Deep down, I'm a really, really, really good person with a huge heart. But, like, this – I feel like I'm also generally kind of an asshole in real life. An a-hole, sorry. And so <laughs> it, it – I kind of just got to be me, but, like, explode at times 10. And it was a blast. I had so much fun. Plus, you're in Hastings, PA, and it's just, like – it was probably, like, 200 racists in the crowd. And I'm walking out there with Shane Taylor in the main <laughs> event. And they just – they hated him. They hated me, and it was so much fun. And we had such huge plans, you know, for for how we were going to progress with the the Collier and uh, Shane Taylor feud, and it it kind of you know, indie wrestling happened, and uh, I don't know what what exactly went down, but it was not meant to be. So that was it. And then after wow. that, I I really remain, you know, some people say it's stupid, and I shouldn't, but I'm very loyal to Chuck. Uh, because I know now I could probably go somewhere and say, you know, for, you know, I could do this and that, and, you know, I, it doesn't, indie wrestling doesn't pay much. So it's not like they'd be breaking the bank to bring me in and do, do their video work or do whatever they need to do, uh, promo wise or help, help out on the creative side a little bit. But, uh, I could probably, if I push to get in somewhere else now, but. I just wanted to be very loyal to Chuck because I know if he didn't just blindly go out and take a chance on me, I would I would not be doing this. And honestly, I'm going to be serious for one second, and then I'll go back to being a complete dickhead. But, uh, you know, when you're when just life's a bitch half the time, man, and it really is hard in the corporate world going out and working, and then you got to come home, and there's always something wrong with the house, and then, you know, there's, there's just always all this shit that you got to deal with. But when you when you're you know one night a month when you're with all the guys and you're doing your thing and then you see all these kids that are just having a blast, it just it, you just forget it all. So I I love it and I would never uh, I would never uh, take for granted the opportunity to be part of something like the IWC that Chuck gave me. And so as long as he's around, I'm going to be a Chuck Roberts guy. And that's my only serious moment of it. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I might be digging for another one here. I, and I don't know. Maybe the answered part of this, too. Um, but uh, a question we like to ask of people that, that have been, you know, at this for a little bit. You know, indie wrestling, uh, a lot of people don't know what all goes on with it. And there's some good parts and there's bad parts, you know. Uh, so what do you think are, what's the, what's the, the, the greatest thing that you've experienced with uh, indie wrestling so far? And what is the crappiest thing about indie wrestling? And not like an individual thing. It can be an individual thing or it can just be that thing that always seems to happen. Oh, that's a tough question. See, I told you to, to message me this kind of stuff ahead of time. I so think I did. 
Yeah, I didn't say I'd read it. Oh. Uh, I, I would... S it's tough for the best thing because it's... it's Even as just a, a non-wrestler, you know, and just being there and, and watching what the guys at God's Arm Perform do and seeing, like, the little kids that are so into it and just loving it, that is awesome and then you know you got intermission and sometimes i'll do like the fan reaction and just to see how excited they are to say you know who's gonna win the main event tonight oh the neon ninja's gonna it's just so much fun to see how enthusiastic they are and it kind of like brings out your youth and uh uh you know so that's definitely one of the one of the biggest things and the second thing is i've met a lot of great people um i've made some really good friends since i started this all uh especially with him I, I don't and it's hard for me to say because i don't know what other locker rooms are like but i feel like iwc's locker room is very professional and now we also do stuff that, outside of the ring and you know it's it's so and so's birthday so we're all going to go out or it's christmas time so we're all going to get together and i've had some you know some of my most favorite personal moments in life came with these guys that i would have never met if i didn't do wrestling so i, I would say the kids reactions and and, and you know the younger fans enthusiasm and then the friendships that i made while in wrestling are, are the two best things the worst thing is probably anytime we do a night of the superstars and at a legend show i hate it it's the worst i love i love it like a month later but dealing with those dealing with a lot of those uh you know big time guys is just oh man it can be tough it can be tough <laughs> to go in there and you know Hi, I'm Justin Plummer. I'm just, I run our web show. I want to get a, uh, you know, I want to do this promo. And then I'm pitching them ideas. You know, these guys mm -hmm. that were just sitting with McMahon, you know, maybe 10 years ago, maybe a year ago. Or, and I'm telling them what I want them to say. And they're just like, F you. Dude. Or, or some of them and, that uh, were like at WrestleMania the next weekend. Yeah. Who would that be? Goldust. Uh, well, the first super, no, the first superstars. Uh, I remember specifically, uh, wait, no, am I thinking Legends? I'm thinking a Legends one. I'm sorry. Because I remember seeing, we, I just rewatched the one with uh, Jericho versus the Legends, and Superfly was part of it, and he was just at an IWC show uh, like the week yeah, before. That might I be a Clearfield, actually. Yeah, which is weird because I feel like that would never happen now. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I didn't. I, that was before my time. The first, the first Legends show we had featured Jerry Lawler. It featured, uh, oh God, Sonny was there. Mm -hmm. Which was good. The Rock and Roll Express, Jim Cornette. But that was before Aftershock existed. That's when I was still trying to find my role and we were trying to figure all that out. Uh, the first, I think, WWE guys that came in, and we had some other big names. We always have big names coming in and out. But uh, it was the Carlito, Chavo Guerrero, Mick Foley night. And that mm -hmm. was the first time. And actually, all those guys are great. So I got a fake glimpse into the world of. Hey, none of these guys are egomaniacs. They're all great. Chavo was awesome. Carlito <laughs> was cool. You know, uh, when I told him to spit an apple in my face, he was like, are you serious? I'm like, absolutely. Let's do it. And then, uh, you know, Foley was was a great guy. He just, you know, the only thing with him was it just seemed like he was so worn out. Mm -hmm. He just seemed so tired, even from the minute he got there. Yeah. Um, and a lot of guys are like that. It's crazy to see how tired these guys are seem to be and then they go through that curtain and it's, they're a completely different person it's nuts mm -hmm. like piper you know he goes out there and he's just exploding with energy Foley goes out there and he's exploding with energy and then you see them in the back and they're soft-spoken um you know you see bret hart in the back and he's soft-spoken but he goes out and i guess he's still kind of quiet he's a quiet <laughs> guy um but yeah, those events, man, they are just, this year was almost my breaking point, uh, dealing with the, the, I shouldn't say the Steiners, I should say Scott Steiner specifically, and then just, everybody's so stressed out, so everyone's just bitching, and oh man, it was, it, those shows are tough, because you know, some guy, you, I, I, this works in the workplace too, but it works great in wrestling. When you go to these big timer guys, you just go and you kiss their ass and you talk about how great they are and how terrible you are and how great it would be if you'd have them. I shouldn't be saying this because this is all available. Anyone happens to watch it, but it's just like, it would mean so much. Here's what I do. Here's the strategy for anybody that wants to, to get these guys to cooperate. 
tell them how much it means to the up and coming wrestlers. You know, like with Vader. Can I tell the Vader story real quick? Sure. Or we can say Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Vader was the number one most difficult wrestler that I've ever had to work with on any level in my entire life. And I remember when I went to him because he had a match with the STDs later in the night and I wanted to do um, kind of like a precursor to that to show how that came about. And so the STDs were going to be, you know, Chess Flexor is ba just basically bashing the legends because he didn't have a match that night. And I wanted them to walk off and Vader to come around the corner and say, basically take offense to what he said. And that's how the open challenge was going to happen. And I went to Vader and he had no interest in doing a promo. He made me go get Chuck, come and tell him face to face that he was contractually allowed to do a promo. And then when I went to get him, he was pissed because the pro wrestling news and views guys from Butler, this is it right here. The guys from Butler uh, already had interviewed him, like a real interview, not a promo. Yeah. So finally I get him to come back to the locker room. Make it quick. Make it quick. I want to get out of here. He actually, I think he made some Mark drive him home that night, which is just like taking advantage of people. It's terrible. So we filmed the promo. <laughs> and my everybody is so scared. No one will talk to him. The SDDs won't talk to him. My wife, who's the best camera woman in the business, won't talk to him. We filmed the entire thing, and then he walks away. He goes to leave, and Jen goes, Dustin, the battery died halfway through. And I'm like, why did you stop us? <laughs> so I got to go. He's actually walking over to the pisser. He goes to the urinal, and so he's peeing. And I'm like, well, you know what? Uh, you know, these guys want to be – these guys have – you know, these young guys, these young wrestlers have a chance to be in the WWE someday. I know this is my peak. If I piss somebody off, I piss somebody off, and I'm only going to get one shot at this promo. So I go up to Vader while he's pissing. <laughs> I'm like, hey, man. And that's when I did my pitch, the one that always works. I'm like, listen, it's only like 30 seconds of your time. But just having you on our show is going to cause so many viewers to tune in. And they may see some of these young guys. And they may be inspired by them or motivated to watch more. And you may be giving these young guys that are working so hard an opportunity that they wouldn't have if you don't do this. Which is all true. But, you know, you just got to just pour it out. So he's sitting there, one hand on his wiener. <laughs> Let's do it one more time. I'm like... So we actually got the cell phone out. I think we used, like, a, I don't even know what cell phone we had at the time. That promo was filmed on a cell phone. I've never filmed a promo on a cell phone. It's always been on HD camera. But the Vader promo from the Night of Superstars was a cell phone promo. It was a second take because the battery died. And I honestly thought I was going to die that night. Uh, but, you know, once you're in the zone, you got to get that interview. And so it all worked out. It all worked out. And we got it. And it was a quick... 30 second thing that people probably don't even think about anymore but my god I'll, I'll remember it for the rest of my life awesome awesome well one of the reasons i wanted to get you on here of course the big super indie shows coming up super indie 13 holy crap there's been that many of them i think my first one was like six uh that i attended your first child that old sorg what's that your first child's almost 13 this month right you uh, bastard what no no what Oh, come on, kids. Are you no, this Eamon is not my kid. He's my co host. <laughs> Shut up. I'm, every I'm, time. Every every time. time. Oh. Way to go, George. Anyways, you have your picks. Big uh big event coming up this weekend here uh in Elizabeth PA, uh south of Pittsburgh at the Great Court Time Sports Center. This is the one that's the big show. It's where they put the screen and everything and 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 we do backstage interviews and who knows what else. Uh, but you have your picks. Great tournament. RJ City, the current champion. You may have not seen him on Nickelodeon, apparently. I don't have Nickelodeon, so I've never well, confirmed you, you that. you have to live in Canada to see him on oh, Nickelodeon. Oh, I didn't even know it was Nickelodeon in Canada. Um, it was quite a lot. It was Gildar. You can Google it and bring it up. It was uh, <laughs> it was kind of like a children's uh, American Gladiators. Nice. But it was not in the United States. Nice. Fortunately. Uh, and you know what? RJ City has been all over TV, but I'm the only one that's been on national TV in the United States. Not RJ City and not Justin LeBar. You know, that's – actually, that's – you were on the Sci-Fi Channel. What was the show again? School Spirits. School that's Spirits. what got my ghost hunting career launched. Nice. Uh, back, you know. Ooh, ghost. Go look at that up. And then I think Shane Taylor was a part of that too, right? 
Absolutely. Yeah, that's kind of one of the things that got us uh, talking again because we kind of lost touch after college. But we flew out, Shane and I flew out to New York together for that. And uh, oh my God, I have the best story. He would kill me, but there's no way he'll ever know I told this. Story. I have to tell this. Can we just take 30 seconds? I know I'm long winded. Go for it. Say. Go for it. Um, I actually did this show before the sci fi thing, just uh, the first time. So I remember I had a blast. I had so much fun on here because that's when I had that app that I could put those cartoon hats on myself and all that stuff. And then turn myself into a baby once. Anyways, we fly that's out to New York, we do our thing. Don't you remember I turned myself into a baby? Oh, right. Yeah, show? yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the only one that's ever done it. I hope. If somebody else did it, this world's a messed up place. And they, they used to turn themselves into cats on the show. All the time. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we, we, we flew up to New York the first time to film this, uh, you know, talk about this spiritual encounter we had in college. <laughs> and... Uh, we're flying. I had to go out a second time because he took too much goddamn time. I didn't even get to the interview. But we're flying home. And, you know, Shane's a giant dude. And we get on the plane and we have uh, our tickets that the, that the uh, Jarrett Creative Group, which is a Mark Burnett people, they, they gave us seats on the uh, emergency exit aisle. So Shane needs a... He's a big guy, so he needs a extension belt for his plane. So I'm a, at least at the time, I've thinned out a lot because I'm a dad now and I can't work out nearly as much as I used to. But, you know, I'm already a broad shouldered guy and he's a 380 pound monster. So the flight out people were laughing at us because we're just, you know, these two guys stuffed in a seat like this. But we fly home and he says, he goes to the, uh, and he's real shy about it too. You know, you think he'd embrace it because it's what makes his career. But he goes to the flight attendant and he's like, hey. Can I uh can I can I get in there? a seatbelt extension? Like, what? Can I can I get a seatbelt for just uh you know for my seatbelt? But you need an extender for your seatbelt. The whole plane's boarding now. He's sweating. He's so embarrassed. And he's like, yeah. She, she goes, oh no, you can't have an extender in the in the emergency escape aisle. We gotta move you. Hey, he he can't sit here. He's too big to sit here. Can somebody switch him seat so I can give him an extender? And he's sweating like he's in the freaking shower. And I'm just sitting there like, is this lady insane? And I felt so bad. And I felt even worse. They actually did move him, and he had to sit next to a stranger. So imagine you're flying from New York to Pittsburgh, and you're like this for hours because you have a 380-pound professional wrestler just smothered <laughs> up against you. Man. And it was just terrible. It was terrible. But uh, is this the part? Is story. this the part where I tell you that Shane Taylor actually works with Eamon in Texas? <laughs> is yeah, that one worked with Shane a couple of times. So okay, yeah. good. how's he doing down there? He's good. He's good. He just came up uh, from what I know a really good match with uh, Ray Rowe recently. I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. Good. Well, if you see him, uh, although I could probably just text him, let him know uh, I'm thinking about him. He's doing a lot. Absolutely. Great guy. One of the nicest guys. And you'll hate that I say that, but he is one of the <laughs> nicest guys I've ever met. He is an awesome dude. He is, he is a really good guy. Yeah, he's a, he, he's one of the coolest guys uh, we've worked with. And I, I love the stuff he was doing in RWA when when they'd let him just be a monster over there. Uh, really good stuff. Um, so, I'm hey. Thinking look, like, I'm thinking, like, I'm 210 pounds, and I can't move as good as he does at 380. Oh, yeah. Know. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, real quick, I want to get into this. Of course, we start getting into it. Uh, Matt Tavin of uh, Ring of Honor. Lowrider, P.D. Williams, Sandy Guerva, Guevara, sorry, uh, awesome guy that actually works with Inspire as well. Um, Ethan Page, Lewis Linden, uh, Chris Saban, of course, there's a last chance four-way. Step us through. If you're on video, we have the brackets, and Plummer has gone through and made his brackets. Fill it out. This his... is like March Madness. It is. Except it's not even March. And I guarantee you these picks are right. Okay, I know. I know IWC better than anybody. And even though I may have tweeted a match that wasn't even happening last night, I deleted it. So it's like it's never happening. What was I know it? it's better than anyone. What was it? So here's what's going to happen. I don't know. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know what? I've, I, I seriously, I've had a cold for over a week now, and I am playing softball two nights a week, and I'm working nine to ten hours a day, and I have a baby, and I'm doing it. I'm just worn out. So, you know, I had a weak moment, and I tweeted a match that wasn't actually a match, but I deleted it. Hopefully nobody saw it. <laughs> Even though the two guys that I tagged in it retweeted it. <laughs> 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 I'm like, I delete it. I'm like, delete, delete. And I'm seeing it, the retweet notifications pop up. I'm like, no. Oh, God. Oh, man. It was so bad. I, I, I might not even work for the IWC right now. <laughs> <laughs> and that just made this interview awkward. Um, anyways. I told you. You f- I refuse to come on here without making it awkward. You, That's you, my goal. So you filled out your brackets. Here I got the here round two. What do you got? RJ City and Andrew what? Palace. There's logic behind all of these. Okay. I hate Justin Labar. Okay. There's no way, there's no way that RJ City is going to win that first match. Wait, you're going to have to bring that back up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Andrew Palace, seriously, though, Andrew Palace is one of the best trainees I've seen in my time with IWC. I think that... This month is his time to shine. It really is. Um, nobody's ever walked into the Super Indy Tournament as champion and walked back out. I don't see that changing with a guy like RJ City. Great on the mic. I won't take that away from him. Maybe the best speaker I've ever seen in indie wrestling, if not all of wrestling. But uh, I don't I don't see him repeating. And I, I just – the STDs are on fire right now. And Andrew Palace is one of the best young guys that we have going, so it's really exciting to see him here. So Andrew Palace for sure, moving on there. Uh, wh- why is this so blurry? I can't Matt Tavin uh, and over Lowrider, you're seeing. Oh well, yeah, oh, definitely. Okay, so uh, so Matt Tavin, he just uh, went one on one with Dalton Castle at, at the uh, night of the Superstars. Almost was the IWC Heavyweight Champion. So I don't see any reason that he won't move into the second round of the Super Indies. Okay, and then Petey Williams and Sammy. P.D. Williams, hey, I heard he stole a move from Buff Bagwell. (laughs) (laughs) So he's got to win. If we see a Canadian Destroyer at Super Indy from the originator of the Canadian Destroyer, I'm going to poop and pee and throw up and blow snot everywhere. Fluids from all orifices of my body. Oh, wow. Buff Bagwell thing was great. But let's see it. I think we're going to see the Canadian Destroyer from P.D. Williams. I think we're going to see it at Super Indy, and it's going to be glorious. And then uh, Ethan Page or, uh, over Lewis Linden you have here? Yeah, that's actually a tough one because those are those are both uh, two really good guys. But I think Ethan Page has a lot of momentum right now. Um, he's a guy that I didn't see fitting in in IWC, but I think he has fit in. And to qualify, and I was completely shocked by it, he beat – the Super Indy Samurai, I mean, the guy that embodies. There was Super Hentai that used to be the face of the Super Indy Tournament, but now that's clearly Facade. Facade's in the picture all the time. Uh, for Ethan Page, I don't know if I'm allowed to say his name, for hashtag all ego to beat Facade to get into the tournament, I think that's huge. So I think uh, we can look for him to make some noise in the tournament. Awesome. And then you got Facade taking on Chris Saban. Uh, yeah, Facade in the four-way. To- Facade in the four-way. This is Facade's time to shine. Every year, the Super Indy Tournament, he does something phenomenal. So, uh, without a doubt, I'm going with Facade in that first round. Awesome. And I got uh, your second rounds. You got Andrew Palace over Matt Taven. Absolutely. I'm telling you. I am telling you. I've not been this impressed by a homegrown IWC guy since I've been in the IWC. I think Andrew Palace is going to do huge things. I think he's going to go on to the finals. Uh Absolutely. This will be the biggest win of his career. Uh, maybe besides the Matt Stryker victory, which, you know, if you're an IWC fan, you know he beat Matt Stryker, former WWE superstar. Andrew Palace is the real deal. He's talented, he's charismatic, and uh, he's going to be in the finals of the Super Indy Tournament. Justin Plummer says so. Official prediction right here. <laughs> uh, Mr. Uh, All Ego over PD Williams. Yes, again, again. I don't necessarily like the guy that much but he's on a roll he's on a roll uh your momentum's on his side beat the side to get in here i i expect him to to get to the finals as well unfortunately and saving over facade saving over facade how can you bet against saving because we're gonna if you even want to throw up the graphic right now uh that's my pick that's my pick saving to win it all and if i'm right 
I'm on, I, I don't see how – honestly – Call back to uh, Super Indy 3, I believe. Back to Super Indy 3 because you look at these final three guys, and I'm very confident in these final three, and I, I truly mean that. Uh, Andrew Palace is – I'm almost positive he's going to make it there. I mean, I, I really, I'm really pulling for the guy because he's the real deal. Ethan Page will be there. But it'll be the first time that either of those guys are there. Saban's been there. He was there, what, super – uh, how many years ago? Three. Was it? It, was it was 10. A while ago. 10 years ago. God. But he was there. 10 years or not, he was there. Uh, you know, and, and you can't discount experience. And I think that so was – I think that's probably – I'd have to look at the DVD, but that's an era when, like, I think Christopher Daniels, AJ Styles, CM Punk were regulars. I don't oh, know if they were all huge. in the same tournament. It was huge. I mean, the, if you look at the people that he beat to win that tournament, it's insane. And and this, you know, this tournament is pretty stacked, but – and who knows? Maybe 10 years from now we'll look back at this tournament and be like – Look at the guys that were in that man. I wish I would have known they were all going to make it big time because that's that, and that's the beauty of Super Indian. That's why I love this event more than even the Night of the Superstars, the Legend events, because you have WWE superstars here, and on June fourteenth, you're going to have WWE superstars in the building. You just don't know who they are yet, and that's what's I, 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 I oh god, I love it. You just don't know. I mean, just looking back to my first Super Indian, looking at how many guys got signed to the WWE that were there that night. And you have no idea, but there's just so much potential in that building. Um, and it just makes it the most exciting event, I think, in the area of the year. If, if you're gonna, if you're an indie wrestling fan, if you're a wrestling fan, if you're not a wrestling fan, and you, and you just wanna check out a one show for the year, and I'm not saying this, I know I'm an IWC employee, but June 14th, this is the show, because you're looking at the future of the IWC. And uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be an absolute blast because we're gonna look back and when I'm on this show ten years from now and we're joking about how we used to use laptops with webcams built into them to transmit each other's pictures to each other because the technology would be so advanced we're gonna be like yeah you know we're at least three or four of these guys would have moved will have moved on into the big time awesome. it's just who's it gonna be who's gonna capitalize on that potential and who's not but. Awesome. For Super Indy 13, I gotta go with the man with the experience. I, I hate to go with the obvious pick, but I just don't see, you know, starting off his first match against a guy like Facade or whoever wins the four way dance, uh, you know, that's already worn down, and then moving on. I, I, I just think I gotta go with him. So we'll see. And if I'm right, I'm coming back on here. I'm gonna rub it in everybody's face. <laughs> awesome. Plumber, where can people find your stuff in Aftershock? People can find IWC Aftershock sometimes on IWCWrestling.com. No, that is the main place to go. IWCWrestling.com, or you can follow IWC Wrestling on Twitter, or follow myself on Twitter, at Plumber, that's with two M's, P-L-U-M-M-E-R. Plumber loves you, because you know I do. Or check me out on Facebook, just search for Plumber Loves You. Apologies, um, I think I misspelled it. I'm, I've left the S off. I had just a U before. Uh, on, on your screen. How long have we known each other, Sorg? It's got to be at least 40 years we've been best friends. It seemed too it's long for a Twitter handle. So go uh, check him out. Justin Plummer, I... IWC. All right. Do it. All right, let's, uh, uh, real quick, uh, you know what, Eamon, let's go ahead and wrap up, uh, uh, touch base on a couple things, a couple indies going on um, uh, real quick. And uh, get out of here for the Indie Mayhem show. All right. Sounds good. All right. Well, first of all, you know, as I said, I uh, 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 I think I mentioned before the show. Ended up, I was we were doing our 10 year anniversary. Took a trip up to Erie, PA, having fun. Ran into a friend, good old friend up there. I happened to check in like near me in Foursquare. Mutual friends with one John McChesney, who's been on the Mayhem show before. I found out mm. Pro Wrestling Rampage is having a show that very night up the street. So th and this goes back to what we talk about constantly on the show about how there is indie wrestling everywhere, Sorg. Yes, and, and I knew there's indie wrestling in Erie. And for. how many times am I like, I'd like to check out some more stuff here in Pittsburgh that I don't get to attend, and I'm just too busy or too tired uh, uh, whenever I'm not doing something like IWC or RWA. And I'm like, you know what? I haven't been to a PWR show since I shot that thing with Joe for prime back when they had uh, uh jerry lynn and, and billy gunn there uh years a few years ago i gotta it, 
wife was like, let's go. I'm like, really? Okay, let's go. Uh, fun <laughs> show. It was uh, definitely a smaller v- venue up there, Club Saga. Um, but uh, uh, John McChesney, Pepper Parks was one of the matches. Had some of the other girls that we've had around here. Angel Dust, Brittany Forrest, some other names have been around in the ladies scene. Um, it was a fun show. One of those fun, small shows. I was amazed. This, I want to try to say this without being creepy. I, I was amazed how many, like, mid or preteen girls were in the in the uh, audience you are such a creep <laughs> <laughs> but no seriously it was like you're like oh it'd be a bunch of guys it's a wrestling show there was these girls and, and and they were all apparently sitting in front of me on my side and yelling at everybody all night long and it was it was pretty incredible i i, I just you don't think of pro wrestling being the girls that are into it so much you right think of it being very i mean it's it's common, you know, sort of believe that it's very male dominated. Yes. Thing, you know, and especially indie wrestling for that matter, because, you know, just sort of you have to be a hardcore fan, I guess you could say, to sort of follow that uh, subculture. I don't know if subculture is the best word, but like to, to search out, you know, indie wrestling companies. But uh, but no, they, they put on a fun show up there. Um, and I had fun. If you look at my tweets from Saturday night, I had fun uh, 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 watching the show, commenting on it, because, you know, it's always interesting when you drop into an indie show and you have no idea what the storylines are. You don't know who any of these people are. Uh, and you're trying to figure out what's going on uh, and, uh, and and having fun kind of poking at some of the wrestlers. Like, what is the deal with this guy? You know, there was like a poor man's godfather wearing all pink uh, going on there, and I, I, I could not figure it out for the life of me. But... That's indie wrestling, right? Uh, but no, Pro Wrestling Rampage, if you want to go check them out, they're on Facebook. Uh, just look up Pro Wrestling Rampage. Um, I think if you do PWR, there's a couple of things that actually uh, pop up. Uh, but uh, I know uh, Jamie Scott, I think, is a promoter up there. I've talked with him in the past. And uh, they, they, they do a lot of cool stuff up there in Erie for a, a, a good thriving indie, I think, for uh, you know a smaller town like Erie. Um, so, I mean, th- this is a place where you know they get they get the house shows whenever WWE comes to town, you know? Okay. Um, and I mean, that, that, if that tells you kind of the size, I, I feel like this is more, no, Corpus Christi gets SmackDown, doesn't it? Yeah, we get, well, normally we get SmackDown tapings. I don't think we've gotten a raw in a long time. Yeah. But yeah. yeah but it's, it, you know, it, it's, on, it's on that level as far as towns. And I think they're the only, uh, a decent sized thing in there, uh, uh, in Erie. Uh, so go check them out. Uh, they're, if you're in Erie, around Erie, get drivable to Erie. They're actually doing a lot of free shows. I know they were doing something uh, with the local uh, uh, the double, triple A, whatever, baseball team, the Erie Seawolves, uh, hmm. uh, along with a, a Sergeant Slaughter sign, meet and greet signing, uh, and a couple other free shows at, at some of the uh, fest- festivals around the area as well. So, um, so yeah, go check them awesome. out, Pro Wrestling Rampage. Uh, hey, hey, what else is going on uh, in your nickel? Was there, Eamon? In my neck of the woods specifically, I am working this weekend uh, because we, it's only been about three weeks since our last event, but Inspire Pro Wrestling uh, is having our uh, inaugural uh, and what is soon to be our annual event, uh, Clash of the Bash, which is going to be our, our summer spectacular. Uh, it's going to be a really, really fun show. Uh, I've mentioned it a couple times on the show, uh, Beach Attire is encouraged. I will be walk, rocking uh, my best uh, summer attire, so be sure to uh, check Go to the show just to see my attire, for that matter. Um, sort of we look at the preteen girls that are each attire. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. We, we made it very clear, though, uh, appropriate attire. Uh, <laughs> the, sadly, we have to direct that not just at fans, but at some of the wrestlers, too. Um, but we got a, a big show. I am really excited about this. It's also our one-year anniversary, so this is a big show for us, you know. Uh, a lot of companies, you know, you know, I think you can sort of define yourself as being a bit of a success if you can even make it past the year. And I think that we, you know, being able to do that is really awesome for us. Um, and we've got a huge main event of Mike Dell defending his Inspire Pro Championship against Lance Hoyt, uh, w- former WWE TNA New Japan Pro Wrestling star. So that's going to be really, really cool. Um, we have a big singles match, a match I personally feel could quite, quite possibly steal the show when Matthew Palmer takes on Ray Rowe for the number one contendership. Uh, this is the first time Ray Rowe's returning to Inspire since February, so it's going to be great to have him back, obviously, now competing in Ring of Honor and doing so much amazing stuff right now uh it's gonna be good to have him back and against matthew palmer first time ever matchup and it's a much anticipated matchup uh it's gonna be really really fun we've got 
uh, Masada making his uh, Inspire Pro Wrestling debut, taking on Unholy Gregory James. Hopefully, if Masada can survive Tournament of Death this weekend, uh, the night before, um, please be safe. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of really good stuff on this card. A, a lot of really intriguing matchups. A lot of big uh, grudge matches coming to a head at this event. Um, there's going to be a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, we also we also have a live band performing for the first time at our show. Um, Low Super Avengers, obviously a wrestling inspired themed uh, 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 band, uh, will be performing for us because you know it's summertime. We want to party a bit. Uh, it's it's going to be a fun time. There's going to be a lot of stuff. Uh, obviously, also, I mean, this is also the first official, official, official event uh, with us under the uh, the flag of the National Wrestling Alliance. So that's, that's nice. going to be awesome as well. If you, if you want more information on that, we had a great long conversation uh, last week with one of the uh, co owners. Uh, so go check mm-hmm. that Max out. Max Meehan on rest, uh, WMS one or excuse me, IMS uh, twenty two. Yeah, twenty two. I think we're at twenty three right now. So. Awesome. <laughs> I can count. Um, but yeah, this is going to be really fun for us. I'm super, super excited for this. Uh, it's going to be good being back up in that booth and calling the action as always. So I'm super excited for that. Uh, you can get tickets at inspireprowrestling.com. Uh, this is at the Marquesa Hall and Theater in Austin, Texas. Uh, it's at 6226 Middle Fiscal Road. Come on out. Uh, if you're a wrestling fan, if you're not a wrestling fan, we've had a lot of people you know, sort of come to shows because it's, you know, and, it, and it, the entertainment factor, and they get hooked, and, and it's awesome to see. Um, it's going to be a really, really fun night. It's $15 front row, uh, reserved front row, $12 for general admission. Uh, we're almost sold out of front row, so if you want to get front row, get them now um, so you can make sure you get that close-up seat. Um, and, yeah, go check that out. Uh, keep an eye out on SmartMark Video and SMVOD.com because we will soon be having our very first event uh, that we are selling uh, through them are in their blood event from uh, this past May, um, which had a lot of amazing stuff on that card. Uh, Sammy Guevara, like we mentioned before, in an amazing ladder match with Ricky Starks and Barrett Brown. Um, Porsche Perez and Barbie Hayden for the NWA World Women's Championship. There's so much stuff on that card that you need to check out. Yes. Uh, so go to Smart Mark Video, go to SMVOD, and, and you can watch the wrestling, you can hear my commentary, and, and you can have a good time. So please go support Inspire Pro Wrestling because if I haven't swayed you enough by my time on this show, you need to do it now because I'm, I'm going to keep talking about it. I'm in. I'm checking it out for sure. See, I got one guy hooked. There we go. He got one. It at least worked for me. I'm in. Yeah. There we go. Uh, there are a couple other indies going on this weekend, mm-hmm. uh, a couple big ones. One that I do want to talk about, a company I haven't mentioned before. Um, obviously, Chikara um, has been growing in popularity now uh, uh, since its return. Uh, I com- they've had also a lot of subset companies. Uh, obviously, wrestling is uh, is still wrestling is fun. I believe is still running. Uh, so I don't really know what their next show is. I believe it's in. Uh, I don't believe it's till August. So keep an eye out for that. But uh, a company called Excellence Professional Wrestling is holding an event this weekend. If you go to their website, uh, uh, you can definitely see the Chikara influence uh, on that show. So uh, there's gonna if you like the Chikara guys and you're in the PA area, go check that out. Their Summer Solstice event in Sellersville, Sellersville, PA, and that's this Saturday, June 14th. Uh, doors open at 6.30, bell time 7 o'clock. You see on the uh, front page, you have Dasher Hatfield, Mr. Touchdown, Hollow Wicked, Icarus, the new Chikara uh, Grand Champion. Uh, tons of guys. Uh, here they're putting on really, really great shows. Uh, they're also on Smart Mark Video, I believe, so you can go support them uh, through there. So, yeah, go check them out. Uh, and and, and go- if you're in the area of Sellersville, go support uh, some crazy professional wrestling. Also, I got to uh, – oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, you good. Go ahead. I'll also get a shout-out real quick. Uh, also happening this weekend, rwalive.com, mm-hmm. West Student Area, uh, RWA, uh, this Saturday, uh, the 14th as well. Uh, so go check them out, rwalive.com. We'll have videos uh, talk about what's going on there as well. Uh, Whoa. Whoa. What? What? <laughs> What? <laughs> Here, I'll sell you. I'll, ignore what he said. <laughs> I'll sell you on RWA while I'm at it, right? So, uh, no, they got they got some fun stuff. Something about a. Uh, I actually just saw this former RWA alum was going to come back to defend their championship in front of RWA. So uh, I'm curious who that might be. Uh, so, um, and aside from that, you got anything else there, Eamon? Uh That's all I have. 
pretty Excellent. easy to check out. But like we mentioned every week, uh, besides the indies uh, that we've listed today, if there is an indie wrestling show near your area, uh, and you could probably live there anywhere and find an indie show somewhere close, uh, if not with a bit of a drive, go to it. Go support the guys uh, that are busting it for, you know, they're not doing it because you know they're making the big bucks. They're doing it to get exposure, and they're doing it to hopefully maybe make it big one day. And mm-hmm. you going to that show could help uh, them in that journey. So awesome! Uh, if there is any wrestling show near you, go support it. Justin yeah. Plummer. Are you tired of Cena? Are you tired of John Cena? Are you tired of Randy Orton? <laughs> I know. Go I am. Indie guys. <laughs> go support your indie guys because they'll be the next ones to take John your Cena will be So get out there for the past year and a half. Turn into the worst thing ever. Justin <laughs> <laughs> is the new member of the Shield, man. I love that guy. Uh, damn it. Damn it. <laughs> we'll talk about that. <laughs> Wrestling Mayhem Show. We're going to get to that in a minute. Justin Plummer, thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Are we still in that thumb wrestler tournament when we're done with this? Or oh, what? yeah. Hold on a second. Let me. Where did I put them? I, I Possibly don't... one of those. <laughs> I, don't know. I, got, I don't know. I got one of these guys. We can do some yeah. Ultimate Warrior. Cool. Does that work that for you? The, that is the weirdest ultimate Let warrior. Let me Hogan. You. He's running. He's running. Wait, what do you got? You got oh, you got a Hulk Hogan. It's the rematch. <laughs> this is what I do to your show. This is show. amazing. You know, I'm just roughly hey, I have more action figures right now. So I feel oh, super I'm trying to find my <laughs> axe of demolition. I found my crush. Um... Oh, don't so you no one wants crush. If I turn on the screen screen behind me, I have seventy of them. Here you guys. go. Here you go. There's your the guy that got you into wrestling. Axe That's from it. Demolition. Axe from Demolition, and nobody will ever give him credit for that. But he brought me into wrestling. So if he's watching this, which he probably is, of course, <laughs> yeah. come hang out sometime. I got half a bottle of Goldschlager left. Go check him out. Plumber loves you on Twitter. IWCWrestling.com. We're at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker. Uh, iHeartRadio was the other one I was trying to remember. Uh, like us, subscribe to us, uh, share us with your friends. Good times at WrestlingMamShow.com, 412-206-WMS0. Um, and also, again, thanks Basic Sickness for this outro you're going to hear uh, right here. We'll see you guys next week. Go support some indie wrestling. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Peanut for the taste of the